Thank goodness for Photoshop. Look at this. We can get a gorgeous sky replacement and a beautiful reflection very easily in Photoshop. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a gorgeous location similar to this, expecting these amazing skies that just don't show up. Now we know that we can't always go back to these places, but thank goodness for the technology that we have that we can make these realistic sky replacements and reflections very simply and very easily. What I'm going to show you today is how we can use Photoshop to make these sky replacements and reflections. But more importantly, I've got an action for you. But hold on. Don't skip to the end of this and just expect to watch the action. All right. I'm going to use my daddy voice, my first sergeant voice and say, stop. I want you to watch this. OK, because it's really important to understand what's happening here so that you can use these sky replacements and reflections to the best of your ability and have complete control over them, not AI control, complete control. OK, so check this out. I want to replace this guy, but I also want to replace the reflection. Now, you might think that we would have to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff to do that, but we don't. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to sky replacement. Now, what I'm going to do here with this sky replacement is I'm going to pick one of my favorite skies that I actually have here that I will also include with that action download for you. I'm going to click on this drop down menu and the sky that I want to select is this one right here. I could really use any sky that I want for this, but for this being a blue sky kind of day, I want to have a blue sky kind of sky. It would be really awkward if I put in some type of sunset here because the light just wouldn't be right. But this looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to do anything crazy with this or change any of these settings because to me, it looks all right. And most of the stuff I really don't want to do in this panel anyway. I want to do that stuff later after I have all of the folders done. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. So now I need a reflection. So you might think to yourself, well, just go ahead and duplicate this group and flip it and rotate it and do this thing with this mask. You don't have to do all that. <laughs> OK, what I'm going to show you here, we're going to go up to image. We're going to go up to image rotation and we're going to flip the canvas vertically. Now, there is another way to do this. If you press command or control T on your image here, if it's not a background, you press command or control T and then you right click and say flip vertical. This is not going to do that. What this flip vertical does is it flips the image that you're working on or the layer that you're working on vertical. We need the canvas to flip vertical. So we need to go to image, image rotation, and then flip canvas vertical. It will take everything and just flip it around. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit. We're going to go to sky replacement and you guessed it. We're going to select the exact same sky at the exact same location that we just had. So I'm going to make sure that I have that sky selected. It looks like it already has defaulted to that sky for me. So I'll just go ahead and press. Okay. It's going to be pretty much in the same location. And if it's not, we can move it as we need to. And the way you would do that is you look at where this sky is right here along this ridge line here and see if it meets and matches up with that one. And if it doesn't, you can just move it up and down very slightly just like that. And it looks like it's a little bit better than it was. And we'll press OK. Again, I'm not trying to do anything in that panel right now as far as changing any of the settings, because I'm going to do a lot of work with this after this. So what we need to do now is flip it the other way. So I'm going to go to image, image rotation, and then flip it vertically again. So you think, wow, OK, we've got a beautiful reflection now and it works. We can go save the day. No, that's not the case. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to double click on this layer here. I'm going to call this sky. OK, I'm going to double click on this layer here called reflection. So that way I know that the, these are the different uh, layers here and we can turn them on and off to visualize that. Now, if you look at the water here, you'll see these little black kind of ripples and specks like we can almost see through the water. So how would we get that in this reflection? Well, how we get that in this reflection is I'm going to double click on the reflection here and in here we're going to go into blend if and blend if is a way to protect underlying layers, certain tonal qualities. So the tonal quality that we want to protect that we want to bring back in the underlying layer is the darkest areas. So I'm going to move this over until we start to see some of that stuff come through from the underlying areas and it looks like it's right about here. OK, so after I've done that, I need to make this look better. So I'm going to press Alt or Option and split this over and feather it over just like that. And look, we can now see the rocks through the reflection. Isn't that incredible? Go a little bit more this way. So we blend it a little bit better. Now, to also make this look a little bit more realistic, we could also protect some of the underlying layers, highlight areas that could be in that reflection because that reflection is going to have some contrast in it. So we'll move this over on this side. And then Alt or Option to split and feather that over like that. And that will give us a nice natural looking reflection here. And then we'll go ahead and press OK on this. 
Now, one thing that you'll see, if you've ever been out in a landscape for long enough over water like this, you'll see that uh, the reflection typically has more contrast in it than the actual sky does because it's just like looking in a mirror. So what I could do is I could add more contrast to the sky reflection or I could come up to the sky and just maybe drop the opacity to about 90%. That'll make it appear a little less light and it'll also allow some of that original sky to kind of show through so it doesn't appear unnatural. So now we're getting to a point where this sky and this reflection are looking awesome. We've got and it looks really good. I, I like what we're going with here, but we can take this a little bit further because one of the things that you're going to see on a reflection is typically that there's going to be either some water movement or some ripples in the water that are going to affect our reflection. So if I click on the sky that is inside our reflection here, I can go up to filter, I can go to blur, and I could go to motion blur. And with this motion blur, it might be set to a default of maybe one pixel or something like that. What we're doing here is we're telling this that we want it to move across either a zero angle or a one angle, meaning it's going to blur from side to side, left to right. Now, how much do we want that to blur by? Well, I would suggest a pretty high blur because as we blur this more, you start to see that it actually starts to look like a reflection. So something between 200 and 250 pixels, depending on the image document that you're working on, should be acceptable. And we'll go ahead and press OK. And that's looking pretty, pretty darn good, isn't it? Like at this point, you should say, wow, this reflection looks just like that sky. But it also has the, the rippling effect that we might see from water as it's coming towards us. But one of the things that also happens as a reflection is a perspective change. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the sky. Now, what you'll notice is that this sky and Adobe is really smart here. What they did here is they automatically unlinked this sky image layer from the mask. So what that means is that anything that I do to this layer, the sky uh, mask will stay in the exact spot that it needs to stay. So when I press Command or Control T on this layer right here, which is going to be the sky, I'm also going to press Control Zero or Command Zero. And what that'll do is it'll move me out so I can see all of the area that that sky actually is in right now. So the sky image that we put over this is about that big. So now I'm going to go to Edit and go to Transform and then go to Perspective. So if I click right here on the corner and I press the control key, I can drag out and you'll start to see that it makes almost a perspective style look to the uh, reflection there. And I can also taper that in a little bit from the top. So it looks like as if it's coming towards me or shooting towards me. Now that will change what's happening right here with your sky as we saw before and where that sky should essentially be reflecting. So we'll just use our up and down arrows and we can press into the shift key and that will get us to about where we need to be. So I need this sky portion to be just above that, that tree there. So I think we got a little bit ways to go here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do just like this. Okay, and that looks pretty good. See that? The top of that little cloud there and the top of that cloud there looks pretty good. And we've got a pretty good reflection now. And here you can taper in this perspective even more if you need to, make it wider, make it smaller, however that's gonna look more realistic to you. Now, every image I wouldn't say that needs a reflection would need a perspective transformation and some motion blur. That's not always the case. But with an image like this, I think it works out really well. Now, look at the final result here. Our sky looks really good. Our reflection looks really good. And you're thinking to yourself, Blake, you are crazy. There is no way on God's green earth that I am going to remember all that stuff. Well, I've made an action for you that does everything for you, literally everything for you. The only thing you need to do is make a selection for the sky. So I'm going to go into the actions that I created here. And what you're going to see here is it's really just this sky with reflection F64 Academy replace sky match reflection. OK, we'll press play on this. Now, the sky that I'm going to want to pick for this image, because it looks like it could be a sunset or sunrise style image, a blue sky isn't going to work. So I'm just going to use one of the Adobe defaults here. And I think that this sky actually looks great for this because it has that kind of blue hour or the sunset type of effect to it. So I'm just going to press OK. I think it's good where it is. Now, what's going to happen is that this dialogue is going to pop up again, like magic. Everything's going to be flipped around. And all you have to do now is remember which sky you selected. So which sky did we select? We selected this one. OK, and I'll press OK. It's going to flip it back over the other side. It's going to ask you questions to say, do you want to apply a perspective correction? If you, pre if you say yes, click continue. 
If not, then press stop. So I'm going to press continue because I do want to do the perspective correction. And it automatically does the perspective correction for me. Then it's going to say, do you want to do a motion blur? I'll say continue. And then this is what it's going to do. It's going to pop up with a motion blur dialogue that I can select how much motion blur I might want in this. And then I'll press OK. Now, what it's also doing here, this action is also doing the blend diff for the reflection, and it's also doing that slight uh, opacity reduction for the sky. This one might be set to 74%, but you can go ahead and change that to 85%, 90%, whatever that might be that would look best for you. Typically, this is like many sky replacements is going to work best when the sky just absolutely is horrible. In this download, I've also included seven skies for you. Seven skies plus this action, it's completely free. If you're interested in these seven skies and the action, just go ahead and click on this link right here. I'm so glad that we can do gorgeous sky replacements and reflections in Photoshop without AI. I really despise having to leave my workflow in Photoshop, so this keeps you right here and it's fully editable and gorgeous.